In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use Folium and Pandas to take data for countries in the world and create what's called a Choropleth map. Now, what we're going to do is work with two data sets. We're going to have a CSV file of indicators, which are statistics for each country. And we're going to have a GeoJSON file, which contains geographical data for the world's countries. Now, we're going to create a Choropleth map. So let's have a quick look at what that is, if you don't know. Now it's a map where you have a set of predefined areas, in this case is going to be the boundaries of each country in the world. And these areas are coloured or patterned in proportion to a statistical variable that represents a numerical or an aggregate summary. So here's a map of Australia for example, and you have different regions in Australia coloured in a, a more intense version of green if the percentage is higher and less intense if it's lower. So you can use the colour scheme to denote statistical information. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to import three libraries, Folium, Pandas and Requests. And I'm going to show you that I've already got this file here on my local drive. It's called indicators.csv. In Jupyter Notebook, you can execute shell commands with um, the exclamation mark at the front. In Windows, it's DIR. On uh, other systems, it's going to be LS to list the current directory. So we've got a local file called indicators.csv. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot these indicators. You can find this data set on Kaggle. The link will be in the description. And the particular file we're looking at is called indicators.csv and it contains data for different countries throughout the world, um, such as life expectancy data and you know elevation data, all kinds of diff different things. There are actually thousands of metrics here. So we've got that locally and we're going to read it into a pandas data frame and we just call the pd.readcsv method to do that. And that gives us this snapshot here. This is the head of the data frame. And what we're going to do now is work through these examples here and show some pandas before we're going to eventually plot the, the choropleth map. So we have a data frame. We want to look at the max and the minimum year. So We'll take that column and call min and max on that, just to see the range of data uh, that exists in this data frame. So dot max and dot min will give the minimum being 1960, the maximum is 2015. Now what we want to do is take a look at this indicator name column, and we want to see how many unique indicators do we have in this data set. So again, we'll index into the data frame and we'll call dot unique. And that will give us back um, this truncated array here. This is a NumPy array. It's truncated, and if we, we call dot shape, you'll see that we actually have an awful lot of indicators, 1,344. So what I want to do now is, let's say we want to find all indicators that begin with the letter L. So we'll use the string dot starts with, and we'll pass L to that. That will give us all indicators that begin with L, or rather it gives us a mask, which we can use to index in there and again we will look at indicator names. So you see we get things like life expectancy at birth, we get risk of maternal death. So we're going to pull out one of these metrics and use that to build a, a choropleth map. So let's do that now. So the first metric we're going to look at is the life expectancy at birth. Um, so the total number of years a child born in each country can expect to live and we're going to use pandas to um, filter down this data frame and get that data. So we get, um, we will set an indicator and what we can do is we can get our data by saying data equals df and we're going to say df indicator name has to be equal to that indicator variable. And then if we see data.head we should see the values and they're all, that indicator name is, is what's represented in this data now. And I want to also remove um, the years. I want to get the most recent year, so I will do a further filter of this data frame. Um, let's first of all find the max year. It's going to be data year dot max. That will give us the maximum year in the filtered data frame. And finally, we can use that maximum year to filter down this data even more. We'll say data year equals max year, and we'll filter that down even more. So now we should see that, as we can see, the maximum year is, is 2013 for that particular indicator. And we have the life expectancy at birth. So now we're going to filter down this data frame to just two columns. And it's going to be called map data. 
and this is going to be a slice of that data frame and it's going to be data and we're going to pass um, two columns country code as a list here and the second column will be value and then we can plot or rather we can look at the head of that data frame and we see we now get a smaller data frame with just two columns country code and value um, the value represents for each country how long can someone expect to live so now we're going to change tack a bit we're going to read the geojson data here um, so I'm going to copy this URL and I've got this linked here and it will be in the, des the description as well this uh, geojson is coming from this particular uh, endpoint here and what we want to do is read that in and we need to use requests to go and fetch that so I'm going to set the URL and we'll use We'll say response equals requests dot get and we'll send that get request to that URL and then what we want to do is decode that data to a geojson variable and a response object in uh, requests it has a dot json method which will take that json data and create a python dictionary from it so if we look at the geojson we get back here um, we've fetched that data from github um, and now we have some geographical data for each country so what I want to do now is finally we're going to create this, this Coropleth map. Um, so Folium has some documentation on how to do this. Um, Folium has a, a class called Coropleth, which you can call and you can pass in data to that. That represents how you're going to do the mapping. So we're going to do that now with this data that we have here. So we have map data and we have the GeoJSON. We need to now combine them in a, a map. But first of all, let's uh, create that map. And we're going to create a variable called M and it's going to be equal to a folium.map. And I'm just going to copy where we're going to center and zoom here. And if we show this map now, you can see we actually get a map printed out on Jupyter Notebook. That's quite useful. So what we now want to do is add a Coropleth object to this map. So what we can do is we can call folium.coropleth and now we, we can pass in a bunch of uh, key value pairs here as arguments. So there's a geodata argument to Coropleth and that's going to be set to this geojson that we've just fetched. And there's also, of course, a data. This is the raw data that we're going to pass to the, um, the map and that's going to be the map data that we set up and um, that was up here. We have two columns, country code and value. And what we want to do is pass that as the data. And we can set a bunch of other values. Let's set columns, country code, and value. And key on, this is an important feature. We're going to key on something called feature.id. Now, this is how it does the join internally. To understand this a little bit, let's do, um, let's look at the GeoJSON. If we look into the features, which is a top level key, and let's look at the first feature that we get. We get back the first country, which is Afghanistan. Now that has a feature or a property rather called ID. Now that's what we're going to do the join on. The ID is AFG and in our Coropleth, it's going to look at the associated map data, find the country code with that particular code and it's going to join on that data. So that's how it actually does the join using the key on parameter to the Coropleth object. And I'm going to paste in just some um, some styling here, fill color, fill opacity, and line opacity. These are other parameters that you can find on the Folium documentation here. And finally, we have another one here that we can use called legend name. So that's going to be equal to the indicator variable that we set up. Um, so if you look up here, we, we set up an indicator variable here, life expectancy at birth. That's going to be the actual name that we give to our legend. So we'll see that in action in a minute. And finally, once we've finished creating the object, we call the add to and we pass in the folium map. And now we can display the map on Jupyter by executing the cell. And you can see we now have a legend with that particular title up here. And the colors are coded by the life expectancy. Now, this could be obviously a bit better with the way it's zooming in in this, uh, in this particular um, notebook. You can probably set width and height here if you needed to, but basically if you look at the data, the highest life expectancy, as you would expect, comes in Europe and in North America, whereas in Africa and parts of Asia, it's not so good. Um, the life expectancy is down in the low 50s in general. And what you'll also notice is there's some countries that seem to be black for whatever reason, Romania, 
doesn't have any data associated with it and there are other countries in Africa that are the same like Congo here. So there's something gone wrong with the, um, the feature.id here. Let's remember what is being used to do the join. Um, so we would maybe need to look into that and find out why it's not happened. So the reason it's not happened is because there's a missing key or the key for Romania, for example, is different from the key that's used in the GeoJSON file. So you might need to do some data normalization um, in order to fix that. And we, can, we could potentially show that in another video. But I just want to quickly show you that we can also change the indicator variable. So right now we're using life expectancy at birth, but we can change that to anything. Let's say we wanted to find out how much of a country's elevation is um, below five meters as a proportion of their total land area. So this is the name of the, the indicator key, land area where elevation is below five meters, percentage of total land area. So if we now look at the data.head, when we change that key, we see that we now have a different indicator name and we can now execute all the rest of the cells um, independently and we should still get that chloropleth map um, it's a very different looking map because the data is different, but essentially what this map is showing, if we zoom in a little bit, we're getting countries where the elevation is below 5 metres, or we're getting the percentage of that country's area where the elevation is below 5 metres. Now, most countries are yellow because most countries have a lot of mountainous territory and most of their land is not below 5 metres. On the other hand, countries you might expect to be um, rather flat countries, such as the Netherlands and Denmark, they have much more of their land area that's below five meters, so they have more color in this legend here. So that's just another indicator variable, and you can play around with this data if you want. There are thousands of indicator names, so you can simply take this notebook, change the indicator that's uh, mentioned here to whatever you want it to be, run the rest of the cells and it should work out of the box. So you can try that. The code will be on GitHub if you want to clone this um, Jupyter Notebook and try it out yourself. You'll need to download the files. Everything will be linked in the description. But that's all for this video. That's how you do a choropleth map in Folium. Very simple, folium.choropleth call. Pass in the data, figure out how you're gonna join the data and you can pass in some styling and a legend as well. Very easy to do and very useful in Python. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.